You're listening to Cards to the Moon, a podcast about trading cards from both a collector and investor perspective. We hope you'll stick around for the ride as we take a deep dive into the state of the hobby, share some hot takes, hopefully some useful advice and fun stories along the way. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards to the Moon. Thanks for joining us for another Friday episode. This is episode 120. My name is Clark from Five Card Guys on Instagram and fivecardguys.com. And co-hosting with me as usual is Hyung of Integrity Sports Cards. But John is away for the next couple of episodes, but he should return in a couple of weeks. All right, so off the top today, let's talk World Baseball Classic. It's been fun to follow with some interesting game results. And uh, from a hobby standpoint, I was wondering if there were any players that really stuck out to you and made you more bullish on them in terms of their card values, or conversely, are there any players in this small sample size of games that made you maybe a little more worried about their upcoming season? And I can start Edwin Diaz. Oh man, that's what a what a sad story. I yeah, it's the curse of the Mets. (laughs) <laughs> the curse of the Mets, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. If, if, you, if you don't know what we're talking about, he got hurt celebrating the um, big upset by Puerto Rico over right. Dominican Republic. So, man, bad luck. But anyway, for real, uh, any players you're high on or you're uh, low man, on? Oh, man, I, I, I don't know if I would actually take... Like, we used to use these as gauges of, you know, potentially a bump in, in, in things uh, like if they do well in a tournament or if they do well in a world series, but we know that that's all yeah, kind of like for show. It's like when, you know, Soto won the world series, you know, you, you see a little bump in the price and it doesn't really, you know, sustain itself. So you can't mm-hmm. necessarily use that as a gauge, I would say, but you know, the only person I would say, you know, I'm always kind of like keeping my eye out is, Otani keeps on just impressing yeah. me, you know, like I, I've been looking for a good Otani for the last, you know, few weeks and it's yeah. tough because you, you can't get really his autos. His autos are probably the toughest, but I would say, um, you know, someone like Shohei where he's, I mean, if he wins a world baseball classic and keeps on doing what he's doing at the rate he's doing mm-hmm. it, like something like 46% of the, the household in, in Japan were watching the game at one point, which is, which is ridiculous. Uh, how big and the magnitude That's of crazy, the superstar yeah. Shohei Otani is in, you know, in Japan, but also worldwide. You know, he has a huge mm-hmm. um, uh, fan base. And I think as he keeps on showing people, like his value goes up in my books just based on kind of like what he's doing on a, on a day-to-day basis. Whereas guys like Yu Chang, who was the MVP for, you know, Chinese Taipei, he's in 2020. I have a S S F S P or an SP or SSP of him, but it's probably worth five bucks. Like that, that, that ain't going anywhere. You know what I mean? So like, uh, it's, um, even though he's had a, a, a great WBC and, you know, Randy Rosarina is another guy. He killed us, uh, with with Canada, um, but uh, other than that, I think um, I don't think there's going to be any bump to tell you the truth. And you know, I could see guys like Otani maybe receiving one, but other than that, I'm not uh, too high. Especially guys like from the Dominican, you know, they're you know, I guess underwhelming in terms of the performance. But I don't see on the other side Soto's value going down or Julio's value going down because of it. Yeah, you know what? I, I generally agree with you. Um, for me. Like the number one guy on my list, funny enough, was Shohei Otani. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking like, can this guy just go on a big slump so I can have an opportunity to buy in? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's he's just killing it wherever he's playing, in whatever level he's playing in. And uh, yeah, if there's a such thing as going double all in, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm there with Shohei. Although, you know, the price has to be right and it's hard to find good deals these days, right? But um yeah, other guys, Soto, uh, I'm still pretty confident. Like I think I know there was an injury concern going in um, with him um, playing for uh, Dominican, and uh, he seems to be doing fine. Um, but on the other end, you know, our boy Vladdy, um, I guess he couldn't play because of a knee injury. So I'm a little nervous, both as a you know rookie card collector, I have one of his Bowman Chromes, and as a Blue Jays fan, of course. So I'll keep a close eye on how Vladdy's health is. 
And um, yeah, other than that, not much more to add, you know, from a Canada I perspective. Lo- I Well, from a Canada perspective, disappointing. But overall, like, I just love the D- WBC. This time of year, you have like playoff baseball, you know, at the beginning of spring training. So yeah. I'm I'm all in on the WBC. I thought they did an amazing job with the coverage, the scheduling, you know, um, getting it to uh, like, that's all I see in social media, you know, which I love. It's just my feed just buried with highlights. And uh, yeah, it's just a great tournament. I thought they did a a great job this year for sure. Yeah, it was really fun. Unless you're a Mets fan. A lot of Mets fans are calling for the the end of WBC, you know, because... Yeah, I mean, I, I can't blame them, but um, at the same time, it was it, se- it seemed to be a freak accident. So, um, but I was going to say on the Canadian front, uh, Tyler O'Neill, he was uh, hitting everything. <laughs> he almost took my arm off one time. He was trotting around third. Uh, this was 2013. We were in Taichung, Taiwan, okay. and he hit the furthest home run against Venezuela. Like it was probably 440 feet, and he came around the base. I was coaching third. Yeah. He gives me a high five. Almost took my arm off. I'm telling you, this guy is absolutely nuked. You know, yeah, he, but uh, yeah, he was huge, uh, and a couple other guys for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that was fun watching Tyler O'Neill, of course, of the Cardinals currently. And um, if you're wondering, his uh, Bowman 2016 Bowman Chrome Rookie Auto is going for 50 bucks. BGS oh, 9.5. Yeah, great for that's the PC. Steal. Absolutely. And uh, you know, I gotta I gotta shout out our Korean team, which uh, was also disappointing. But Very disappointing. Um, Hassan Kim, three home runs, led the <laughs> WBC in the in the preliminary rounds. But um, his three home runs were his only three hits in, <laughs> <laughs> in in the tourney, and he batted a total of one eighty eight. FYI. All right, um, before we go to our discussion, any predictions for the final two teams and the eventual winner of this tourney this year? Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's gonna be a Japan US uh, hmm. kind of final. Um, I think Japan is so fun. I there's so much uh, energy with with Lars Nootbaar, you know, on that squad, and you know, having guys like Shohei and Yu Darvish, you know, just superstars. These guys are super superstars in yeah. their culture. So, you know, they do have it, you know, great where they they're in Tokyo for the next round as well so they have oh, the, the home crowd so that's going to definitely play a factor so it's going to I think allow Japan to kind of have that especially with Korea out right. um, and then US coming on the strong side with you know Puerto Rico and Venezuela. Venezuela is looking really good too but mm-hmm. I just you know the, the US pitching depth is a little uh, kind of like questionable but right. other than that you know that's a lineup that's kind of like ridiculous. This is equivalent to kind of like the dream team, right? And sure. with baseball, though, anything can happen, you know, especially international baseball. I've had my share of international baseball. Anything can happen mm-hmm. at any given time. You just never know. Yeah. And it's a um, small sample size too, right? Like, 100%. you know, any, you, you have a good, great day and then that's all you need to go on, right? So because of that, I'm going Cuba versus Japan. I think USA... Wow. Cuba, could beat eh? Venezuela, but I mm-hmm. think it's going to be a really good match. It's going to take a lot out of those bo- both those teams in the in the what is it the quarters, right? Yeah. And then and then whoever goes on, I think USA probably goes on. Although Venezuela has a good team, I think um, Cuba can take USA just by one of those things where Cuba has the best game of their lives. Hey, you know I'm, I mean? I'm all for it because I have a bunch of Luis Robert base chromes <laughs> yeah. to sell. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> let's go Lou Bob this is your year man <laughs> alright um, for today's discussion I was taking a look at some sales of high end cards this past week and even in this bear market there are some collectors spending tens of thousands of dollars on a single card so I thought it would be fun to go over a list of 5 or 6 cards that sold literally within the past few days and we can discuss whether we're surprised at what it sold for or and or whether it was a good deal or not all right so the first card i have on the list is the 1981 tops joe montana rookie card you know you, you, it's easily recognizable the psa 10 gem mint version just sold for 57,600 i believe on golden but the peak value was around april 2022 and it sold for almost double that 114,000 pop count 110 for a psa 10 what do you think 58k a good deal or i'm gonna say it's not a good deal i'm gonna say you're gonna probably look at another 
fifty percent retraction. Ooh, to be honest, feel, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't think the pop count can you know hold at that level, uh, especially at those numbers. You know, and it's unrealistic to think that it's going to even you know get to the peak at one point or in the near future. But I think, uh, yeah, I think it still has some time to fall. I think there's enough where people are realizing, oh man, you know what? I'm going to take whatever I can get. Um, before the next run happens. And you never know mm -hmm. with uh, non-relevant players like Joe Montana. I grew up, you know, watching Joe Montana. So, you know, huge fan. But like, like I said, these players end up losing kind of like that notoriety because they just don't exist in, in, in the world, you know, right. at some points, right? So it's cool to have in the collection, no doubt, because I'm sure a PSA 10, you know, is, is as rare as it, it gets. But, you know, Pop 110 is a little too high for my liking to sustain that. Fifty-seven thousand okay. dollar price point. Yeah, I mean, at at these numbers, I, I think it's just the volatility is so much higher, right? And like it could really swing further down. So I'm I'm going to agree with you there. Okay, um, the two thousand Bowman Chrome Tom Brady rookie card, iconic, right? PSA ten sold for twelve thousand two hundred uh, a couple days ago. And at its peak in November 2021, it sold for double that, 23,000, mm. wow. with a pop count of 1,138. So definitely higher pop count, but I, I would argue definitely more liquid. I'm going to say no to this again. I'm going <laughs> to say there's going to be uh, a bigger retraction. I like the price point at, because again, the pop count at, you know, 1,000 plus and, you know, Brady yeah. uh, becoming, I guess, not irrelevant, but a, a little less relevant now that you know his career is dwindling down and kind of people are realizing okay you know um you know his career is done so it's like are we i think you know based on a thousand plus pop count that you know there's going to be a lot more trading going on in the off season and you know it goes back to the same thing i think a lot of irrelevant news uh where you know uh he doesn't get any notoriety so uh, it kind of affects the price on higher pop cards where, right. you know, there's constant day trading going on on them. So I'm going to say no deal. I want to okay. target that $8,000, $7,000 mark with this card, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, for me, the argument is simple. It's still technically a base card. <laughs> so Yeah, um, exactly. So, I'm, uh, you know, we talked about this in length in previous episodes. So I'm, I think there's still room to go down from the 12,000 value that it's sold for. Okay, here's a little bit of a different spin. It, it, this is a numbered card to 999. We're of course talking the SP Authentic Future Watch card. And I'm I'm talking specifically about the 2005 Sidney Crosby rookie sold for $10,266 and PSA 10. And mm. the peak was double that November, 2021 at 21,000, but the pop count is 55. Yeah, this this card is definitely something that I would be interested in at this price point. Um, mm. I I would like it to be a little lower, to be honest. Uh, but I don't with the lower pop count. I think um, and you know that this is one of Crosby's biggest cards, right? If you could find a good For auto sure. too, you know, a lot of his autos are kind of faded in in the SP Authentic. But um, I don't mind this price. I think it could go down a bit, but. I would say it's closer to a better deal than than not. Um, I I think I would be considering it at at ten grand. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think that's out of the question. Um, and yeah. I think you have the low pop uh, count where I don't think people are selling these and day trading these. Uh, so I think you're pretty safe on that front. So I hmm. don't mind that price. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if Johnny were here, he would definitely be on this. He'd you know, buy two. No question. <laughs> at this price. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, this is one of those cards that I don't, if I had to 10, if I had 10,000 lying around, I think it would not be a horrible deal. Um, but I almost be tempted just to get like an Austin Matthews for five, six K instead mm -hmm. and then buy another card, you know? Um, so I guess if you're a Sidney Crosby fan, um, yeah, it, it's, it's an okay deal, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, Another numbered card, 2001 SP Authentic Tiger Woods Rookie Auto, number to 900, BGS 9.5, so Beckett graded service, sold for $15,000, and the peak was in January of 2021 for 49000 so wow. more than 3x. The pop count for that is 302. 
Wow. Um, I really like this card. I think it's the Tiger card to to have if you're a Tiger collector or even a, a collector of, of long-term kind of like valuable assets. This is kind of like the Tiger Woods Grail, I'd say. Um, hmm. I don't love the price at 15K, to be honest. Um, uh, I think 10K is more the realistic value on these. There's a high pop count, higher pop count than... Um, you know, then a normal like rare auto, but then it's Tiger Woods. It's his rookie auto. It's his official kind of like grail card. So I think there's room uh, for it to grow in the future. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm looking forward to around 10,000. Same thing as that as the Crosby. Um, I'm kind of a little high on 15K, even though the peak was at 50 or 49. I think that's when things were going crazy. I participated right. in the lower end stuff of this Tiger Woods hype. Uh, yeah. And I did uh, actually pretty well off Tiger. Um, so I'm going to hold off on this one. Um, but I'm I, it's close. I, it's definitely a card I, I definitely want to add to my collection. So we're close, yeah. though. Yeah. Um, I think the Crosby card that we just mentioned is probably a better deal. And, and, um, I'm not much of a golfer or golfing fan, so I guess, uh, I'm, I'm less biased in that way, but I do think, uh, under 10 K is probably my target if I was just like an investor and that would be a good deal for me, but I can I see agree. how, I can see how golf fans, Tiger Woods fans would FOMO into this card at 15 K. Right, so yeah. there might be a few more that are out there that might pay this price. But after that, I think it'll actually go down until it stabilizes at a certain point, maybe around the 10K mark. Mm. All right, I got two more, and uh, we'll round it off with our favorite sport, baseball. Uh, the 2014 Bowman Chrome Prospect Gold Refractor uh, autograph card of Mookie Betts, number to 50, of course. The BGS 9.5, gem mint graded, sold for 12600 And at its peak, it sold... For thirty six thousand, so almost three times wow. the price in April of twenty twenty one. The pop count is, I don't know if this is right, forty one. That's crazy. 50. That's some good condition gold, <laughs> right. gold cards, it's like automatic. That kind of high gem rate. It's a very high gem rate, and you know it. It all depends on, I guess, the PSA ten um, for that. Like, uh, if if that. I, I'm guessing back in 2014, not a lot of people submitted to PSA because BGS right. were known for the prospect cards and you'll see a lot more of the older slabs in the BGS uh, slabs, but 41 does seem a little high. Um, it's a little higher to my liking if that's true, but it is a gold, true gold refractor. And mm. I think if you're in long term with Mookie Betts, I don't think it's a bad move. I think it's a pretty good investment. I remember when these things were selling for like five grand and nobody was even flinching at Mookie. And this was probably even right at COVID, maybe yeah. right before COVID or right right after. But it's 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 one of those things where it's like, damn, when when you when you had the chance to buy it and you didn't buy it, and then now it's you're right. talking about double, triple the price. And uh, you're saying it's a good deal. So I don't know if uh, that makes any sense. But for me, you know, um, yeah, I think it's a long term. It's a it's not it's not bad. Mm -hmm. I think these cards can, you know, make a crazy run at them. But that, again, that pop 41 count before I commit to twelve thousand six hundred bucks, I'm checking out that pop count, making sure, you know, nothing funny is going on there. Yeah, it looks like I was just double checking because it seemed weird. But um, the total population, according to Beckett, while well, I'm looking at Card Ladder, is 62. So it looks like it's been recracked and resubmitted, something like that, right? Oh, I because, see. Because it can't be 62 if there's if this number to 50. All right, that's very concerning. So, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I it's don't know what to high. make of that. Yeah, for yeah, no, number for sure. 50, right? I'm, I'm yes. guessing the PSA would be super low just because no one would submit it. Um, yeah, the PSA total population is nine. Yeah, with um, four PSA tens currently, and that's selling for eighteen, just over eighteen thousand. Man, I'm I'm taking the best uh, the best BGS nine five Mookie bets I can get and crack <laughs> it and send it to PSA in a new label. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a play. Um, for me, oh man, this is hard because you know when we talk to Scotty B, we all love Mookie Betts. We all think he deserves more hobby love, but I don't know what it's going to take to actually get more hobby love for Mookie. You know, like 
and and I think for that reason, it might have to be a long term play. People yeah. might appreciate him more once you see the breadth of his talent and just the numbers that he just accumulates over those years. Right. So it's a risk that way because you never know how long he much longer he'll be playing. But um, I'm generally, I don't know, too risky for me at twelve six. You know, if it feels under ten again. I don't know, maybe ten thousand is the psychological number that you know under ten um, is like oh that's not as risky. Um, so until it gets under 10, I'm not, I'm not touching it. All right. And lastly, the 62, 63 home run leader of last season, Aaron judge, his 2013 Bowman Chrome blue refractor, uh, sold for 10,800 graded BGS 9.5 again. And at its peak, it sold in October, 2022, probably during the hype for 16,000. That's uh, 73. Yeah, that's 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 a that's a sell. <laughs> that's a sell for me. Um, yeah, that's a, a no brainer for me. I mean, it peaked. It literally peaked based off the news. You know, I remember when nobody was touching these, and you you went through that season with the refractor, and you did really yeah. well. I think you bought in for was it eleven hundred or eight hundred or something like that. Yeah, around 11, 12, yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. And it reached its peak at one point at like 5, 6K or something like that. And then kind of yeah. is, is settling back down to that, I don't know. 2K what around yeah. there, yeah. So I, I expect <laughs> kind of similarly, you know, um, patterns with that, um, with the blue. Uh, I think blue is obviously a desired, a lot more desired um, parallel. But it's a blue. There's 150. Out. Actually, there's 99 of these. I think right. you, you had the down 2013 to not yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I like the scarcity a bit, but you know, I rather I rather buy the Mookie Gold to be honest uh, at that price point. So I'm I'm out on 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 Aaron Judge until it gets back to I think true maybe three to five k on that. Mm, yeah. I'm going to agree with you there, but I, I really doubt it's going to go back to three to five k. You know, the guys that paid for it for 10k, uh, they'll probably just hold it. And what happens? You know, what happens if Aaron Judge doesn't play a complete season? Right, the tanks. That's gonna th- that thing is gonna tank. Yeah. People are gonna Hard. yeah want to <laughs> cash out as quick as possible on that. I yeah. think his his prices will absolutely crash. So I'm crossing my fingers that Aaron Judge stays healthy and kills it because. We need some life in New York anyway. So yeah. it's it's kind of like that that legends. I want him to be a legend, a New York legend, because you can never have so many of those, sure. right? So Yeah, I would gladly be wrong when it comes to Aaron Judge if he could just, you know, achieve those numbers, stay healthy, yeah, and become that New baseball. York legend like you're talking about. Absolutely. All right. Uh, yeah, that's the list. And um, we'll do this again maybe with Johnny when he's back, where we kind of look at the high-end sales I know we have a poor track record when we try to guess how much uh, these auctions go for when they're actually live. But uh, it's always fun to see what they sell for. And and uh, yeah, like I said, people are spending. People are spending big bucks on some of these cards still. And I guess like us, we're kind of seeing the opportunity right now where, where everything's kind of suppressed in terms of value. And uh, yeah, people are more bullish on certain players than others. So it's fun to watch and uh, we'll definitely do the segment again. All right, that's the end of today's Friday show. Thanks for joining us once again. We appreciate all of our listeners and subscribers. And uh, if you haven't yet, we really appreciate it if you give us five stars wherever you listen to your podcast. And we'll see you with a brand new episode, a full episode this coming Tuesday. See you then. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to Cards to the Moon. We'd really appreciate you subscribing to our podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can also connect with each of us on Instagram at five card guys or you can follow Hyung at integrity sports cards or john at trade you at recess you can also check us out at fivecardguys.com thanks again and hope to connect soon <laughs>